Cooksy Mob, what's up guys? Hey, this is your Cliff Notes for Arlington. What this is is a quick rundown of the top storylines, kind of just get you prepared for your, for your watch party or whatever else you got going on on Saturday. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to thank EBC Breaks, Steve, James, and the guys over there. They kick ass, so check out ebcbreaks.com. Check out Coach Rob at CompleteRacingSolutions.com. Coach has got a program for everybody. They start at about 30 bucks and go up from there. Let them know your Cooksy Mob when you go over. He'll take care of you. Uh, Epic Garage Designs, I'm in the Epic Studio. Get your floors, they're starting to catch on. If you want to look badass, just uh, head over to epicgaragedesigns.com. There's specials on all the floors, racks, whatever you need. And then also, Steel City Men's Clinic. Man, if you're struggling with any sort of an ailment or you're wondering why you're tired or anything like that, check those guys out. They'll run your blood work and figure out what's going on and get you dialed in. They've helped me a ton. So yeah, definitely hit them up. So let's get into this bad boy. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. A few notable things before we get into it with Arlington is the dirt at Arlington is part of the story. This dirt is so good, but it does tend to get kind of rutted, but it makes for some really good racing. Remember, this is the same race where Cooper Webb came back, the same track where, or the same dirt that Cooper Webb came back and almost passed Roxon and like the closest finish ever. Uh, it's that kind of orangish dirt, uh, really good stuff, but it does tend to get a little bit rutted out. Uh, Marvin Muskin came out and said he's not having surgery on his broken uh, scaphoid. You know, they used to call it the navicular, but the navicular is like in your foot or something. It's actually a scaphoid. Typically, they double screw that thing, and it's good for good in four to six weeks, but it doesn't get a lot of blood flow. Uh, I don't know if he's had it broken before, and it's a rebreak, but something's going on. Sounds like he's going to miss the rest of the year, and that might be it for him because the rumor is he's retiring after this year. Ferrandis is making the smart move and going to sit out at least one more week after his horrible concussion that he had where he was just out for minutes at a time. Uh, I'm glad he's sitting out, but I wish he would sit out even longer. Rumor has it, he's coming back for Daytona. Um, so that means Justin Cooper's probably in. This is a triple crown format weekend. And, so, and also, futures are back. A few of the futures, the notables, Evan Ferry is on the registration. I haven't heard much about Evan Ferry. I heard he signed with Triumph. I've heard some different things. Evan Ferry is on the sign-up sheet on a Yamaha. Hey, I love it. I want to see him race. Julian Bomer, the kid who was so fast at A2 out of Lake Havasu. Julian Bomer is badass. Uh, watch this kid. He's really good, and I hope he gets to show what he can do. He came up short of that on that triple at Anaheim and his bars went down, but up until that time, he was the fastest guy on the track, period. Daxton Bennett, who won the Anaheim two round, is back. Casey Cochran, the little guy with his parents that are in the military, he's back. So Futures, I'm very excited. I love this Futures program, how they run them at night, um, but we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys, don't forget, I, I work really hard on these videos. The algorithm really judges us by how many subscriptions we have. So if you hit that subscribe button, I appreciate it. It helps me out. It helps me keep making these videos and pushing them out to everybody and, and growing. And, you know, I'm the anti-media. I give you what it is. I give you weird stuff. I give you body analysis of press conferences and weird stuff. So go ahead and subscribe if you like it and help me out. I appreciate it. All right, guys, 450s. It is down to three guys. We've got Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, and Chase Sexton. These three guys have separated from the pack. They're so good. Uh, Sexton, so after the press conference, looked like Eli Tomac needed a little rest. I'm sure he got it this week. That, that dirt he did, he was not a fan of that Oakland, that soft dirt. He was not a, not a fan of them building steep jumps on that soft dirt, which is pretty dangerous. Uh, he looks strange in that press conference. Like I said, if you want to watch that video where I broke down uh, the body language, his body language screamed, you know, a guy that didn't just win the race. Cooper Webb, he's sitting there in second place in the points, tied with Chase Sexton, just in the catbird seat. This dude is cool, calm, collected, and just uh, he thrives on these moments where he's almost kind of the forgotten man in the Tomac-Sexton battle. Uh, look for him. He's good at triple crowns but not as good as Tomac. Tomac is the best Triple Crown rider of all time. Although Chase Sexton won the first Triple Crown at Anaheim. Um, Ken Roxon, or no, Jason Anderson is on probation. He's in fourth in the points. The wheels have kind of come off for Jason Anderson. Uh, he just looks squirrely. He looks like a guy who's frustrated out there. All those good things we heard about him meshing with the team in 
you know, 2022 are out. 2023 is not the same year. It's not the same Anderson. The fact that Dan Fahey blew him out and said that's not how we ride and they're putting pressure on him not to act, not, they're not letting him be him, that's stupid in my part. Like, you knew who you were hiring when you hired him. So I think, Dan Fahey, you should put yourself on blast, bro. Uh, Ken Roxon, another guy who the wheels look like they're coming off of it. It's crazy. As soon as I said the Suzuki looked good, he hasn't looked good since then. Uh, and the bike hasn't looked good. He's gone back and forth on suspension. And, but mm, he chose this bike. He rode this bike. I think this bike works really good when the track is groomed. And as soon as the track starts to fall apart, I think the heavier Suzuki is at a big disadvantage. I think that's where this really shines. Aaron Plessinger is in sixth in the points right now. Aaron's really coming on. He's showing some fire. And there's not a more fun guy out there than Aaron Plessinger and that sick mullet that he's running. Kick ass. I love Aaron Plessinger. And yeah, I like it. Uh, Justin Barsha in seventh. Uh, dude, is there anyone out there that is more hated than Justin Barsha? I like, Bush. I like Justin, but if you're going to take guys out, Punch up. Don't punch down. Stop taking out guys like Adam Cincerillo, who are on a rebuilding year, or Colt Nichols, who's on a short contract. Like, come on, man. How about you get up there with Anderson and Sexton, Tomac? If you're going to get rough, get, with, get rough with some guys. Punch your own weight. So that's all. That, that would be my only thing to Barsha. I have no problem with the way he rides. Just do it with guys that are on your level. Don't do it with guys who are rebuilding. Um, Joey Savacci, uh, looks like he's going to go through Daytona, and then that's it for him and the Rick Ware Kawasaki. Uh, he's just used this to get ready for a World Supercross. World Supercross is a series that the Rick Ware team is focused on. Um, and I think they were waiting on some sponsor money or something to come in if they were going to do this entire series. It didn't land. So uh, Joey Savacci probably got Dallas, Daytona, and then he's probably just going to be out until World Supercross. Colt Nichols. Colt looked fast at Oakland. Colt is really finding his flow on, that, on the 450. Uh, I think he can be a guy that can get up there and battle up into that five to 10 range. Look for some good things with Colt Nichols in this. Uh, Christian Craig, he did better. He was seventh, uh, qualified sixth. He's getting there, but he's just, I mean, that's way below what expectations were for Christian Craig coming into the season, especially early with those big whoops and the California tracks. Now we're getting the stuff that he's not as good at. We'll see. Uh, Adam Cincerillo. Once again, rebuilding. He's got the arm, the hand going numb. I, there's not really anything they can do for it. Um, United States doctors have essentially scratched their heads. Uh, I say go to Puerto Rico. Adam, if you watch this or anyone around you, I told Nick Way, go to Puerto Rico, try some of that stem cells. It can't hurt. Uh, right now, everything they're doing in the United States isn't working. Go try some, go try some out of the box stuff. That's what I would do. Uh, Dean Wilson's in 12th in the points. Dean's looking good. Dean's just a fun guy to have around there. Uh, Triple crown, I look for him to be right around 10th place, but it's just nice to have Dean at the races. And now let's head into the 250s. All right, guys, so this is the Hunter Lawrence show right now. His brother struggles with the triple crowns. Hunter, not so much, uh, but this is going to put a lot of pressure on him. You know, you come in here off two wins, pretty dominant wins, and, you know, he got Thrasher at the very end, but he came from way back. Um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be... This is the time for the competition to grab some points from Hunter. Um, these shorter races, uh, let's see if they can, they can take advantage. Max Anstey, surprise, in second place in the points. How badass is that? Max Anstey, GP rider, GP winner, uh, riding Supercross at an advanced age in the 250 class. He's got two podiums. He's got 44 points. He's eight points out of the lead and looking good. Uh, maybe Max gets it done here. He won a couple of the, the short motos in the World Supercross. Maybe he can get a moto win here. And to everybody's surprise, no, no, just kidding. To my surprise, you guys all thought he was going to kick ass. Um, Hayden Deegan is third in the points. Like I said, I stand corrected. I was wrong about Hayden Deegan. He showed me far more than what I saw at A2. The kid is pro ready. He doesn't back down. He fights hard. He might get a moto win. And don't be shocked if he's in, the, in it for the overall come the third moto. Uh, the kid's good. He's legit. I stand corrected. Um, yeah. So I think he could easily, if he gets a whole shot, which he tends to do, there's a good chance he wins one of these three motos. Jeremy Martin. Jeremy Martin's looking good. He's riding conservative. He's trying to just kind of get through the season. And I think the whole focus for him is really outdoors. 
I think he wants to get outdoors and stomp them. I think he can win outdoors and be a title threat. I think he knows Supercross isn't his bread and butter, and he's just kind of trying to go through the motions to get through the season healthy. Tom Vial, the Frenchman, he's looking really good. This kid can ride. Uh, I look for him to be right up there battling for a podium. He's going to be in the mix. I look for him to probably have one or two good finishes and then a bad finish and a triple crown. That's just kind of how it goes for rookies. Uh, one, two, and a mistake. We'll see. Uh, Michael Moseman. Michael Moseman. Oh, this has got to be, I mean, he's, he's only sixth in the points. He's got 33 points. Hunter Lawrence has 52 points. But still, that's just from where he was a title contender coming in. This is a guy who battled for wins last year and looked like anything short of a championship for Moseman is a disappointment. And to be in sixth behind Hayden Deegan and Tom Vial and Max Anstey, if you told everybody on that team that's where they'd be sitting after two rounds, they'd call you crazy. First, they'd say you're stupid. You don't know motocross, and the, it just that wasn't expected. Nate Thrasher had a great round two. Uh, he got second place, inches behind Hunter Lawrence, almost won. Big, big mistake in the first round, only had eight points, did not do too well. Uh, he, can, he, he probably is going to be right there. I mean, Nate Thrasher, he did shed the label of first or last. He got second. That's the first time he's got a podium that wasn't first place. So... At least he shed that. Chance Hymas, the rookie, solid. Um, he's just right there. He's in eighth place in the points. He's got 30 points, uh, eight points behind Deegan. Uh, he looks really good. I like, I, I, I like the way he's developing as a pro, probably a little bit better than what I expected. Uh, he did win Futures last year. I expected him to be better than Deegan, but clearly, I know, guys, I get it. I was wrong on Deegan. <laughs> Uh, Jordan Smith, oh man, he had, he'd salvaged, and then I think his bike broke at the end of Tampa, so he's way down in points, 29 points, but he got a podium in the first round, should have got a podium in the second round. Uh, yeah, Jordan Smith, look, he needs to bounce back. Jace Owen in 10th, Jace looks pretty good. Jace is just, I mean, kid's solid. Uh, he's just always right there. He's got 21 points for the first round, and then eight points in the second round. Uh, or no, that was, that was, that's Jordan Smith. Jason Owen went 9-14. and 14. I say, that didn't sound like he got a podium. I, yeah, my bad. Uh, Chris Blos, off the couch, the zombie. You can't kill what's already dead. Uh, Chris Blos is, he, he, he wants more than this. I know he does. This is, this is kind of his results when he's on a privateer team around this, you know, 10th place-ish, 10th, 11th. That's pretty good for, for like an AGE or one of those type of teams. But when you're on Pro Circuit Kawasaki, even as a filling rider, you're expected to be battling in the top five. I'm sure he expects that. And, you know, he said he was riding, he said he was ready, but was he really? I don't know. Um, he had a week to get ready, an extra week on that after two weeks of racing. Let's see what he can do. I, I, I look for Chris to make significant improvements this weekend and hopefully be battling inside the top five. Um, let's see, Cody Shock. Cody, after that big ram of the, uh, the over-under bridge, He's hanging in there, um, and he's coming back from a lot of injuries, and yeah, we'll see where he's at. Hardy Munoz shows some speed. He's a little, little loose out there, a little squirrely, but Hardy Munoz looking good. He's in 13th in the points, but that's it, guys. Remember, subscribe, and I will catch you later.